worship with us, church. Just lift your hands. We're inviting him in here. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Come and do what only you can do. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control.
sing it. Unless you come, will you hear me here again? Yes. Thank you. Cause all I want, make that your prayer. Is all you are, will you meet me here again? Oh, sing it again, sing I'm not enough, I'm not enough, unless you come, will you meet me here again? Oh, cause all I want is all I want, is all you the Holy Spirit told me to say to you and I said it to you almost every single week don't waste one minute of this there's always going to be voices distracting us yelling and screaming at us the world did that this last year but the church's voice was not very loud and, and I'll give us this. We were scrambling, trying to learn how to do church online. We were trying to learn how to keep connected with people. I get it. But isn't that how the enemy always works? Let me just tell you something. The enemy is a liar and he's a deceiver, but he is not a leader. You are a leader. God has called you 
to lead. He has called the church to lead. And if 2021 is going to be anything, it needs to be the church of Jesus Christ leading the world. I had to turn off the TV. They told me in the hospital to turn the TV on so that I could breathe into my little thing every on all the commercials. I had it on three minutes and I turned it off. I said, I can breathe in between every worship song. That'll work just fine for me. <laughs> but I, I have heard such fear, such negativity coming about what 2020 is going to... 2021 is going to look like and I refuse every single word of it yes. let me just tell you something we weren't sick in 2020 we weren't poverty stricken we weren't depressed we weren't alone we came out healed we came out restored we came out thriving we came, came out walking in freedom and victory if we were walking with him and that's, that's always what God's plan is for his people. So I'm telling you right now at the start, get over whatever it is, whatever voice you're listening to that is saying to you, oh no, it's gonna be worse. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind you. I cast that lie back to the pit of hell. We have authority to bind and loose. Billy Graham said this, he said, you will never get a nation back on its feet until the church gets on its knees. Time to become praying people. <laughs> One of our own posted something yesterday and it was really profound. And she always is. A lot of you know her, a lot of you she's given a word to but our own Sherry Houston posted this yesterday. So because it came straight from her, I'm gonna read it to us because it's a church. She's writing it as Jesus to the church, but it's to our church too. And it said this, 2020 brought together a unique set of circumstances that have made it necessary, have made it necessary for my church to wake up. The situation is testing the strength of my people individually and the warfare ability of my church corporately. Just like the days of Gideon and what I said about my harvest in Matthew 13. At the time of the harvest, I will separate the wheat from the tares. Make no mistake, 2021 is a time of harvest. You are standing at a wide open door of opportunity. <laughs> Don't stop. Push through with perseverance yes. and hold on to your faith yes. for the door I have opened, no man can shut. Come on, lift your voice and give God praise. That is the word of the Lord. And before I read that, this is what I declared to the Lord while I was waiting on him to speak to me. I declared these things. I know this for absolute sure. God is still sovereign. God is still on the throne. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. The Spirit of God is still inside of me, speaking to me, leading me, guiding me, helping me. The church is more essential than ever. Come on. The gospel is still saving lives. The devil's still a liar. He's still defeated. And the glory of God is still covering the earth like the waters cover the sea. And it is rising over God's church. And we will not be defeated. We will not be discouraged. We will not give up. So here, let me ask you a question. We talk about God is seated and enthroned as the God of the universe. What a glorious, awe-inspiring picture. Our God, the God of the universe, seated on the throne of the universe. But the really greater, bigger, more important question is He seated on the throne of your life. 
got to answer that question. Is he seated on the throne of your life? And it's just like I talked about earlier. If he's not on the throne of your finances, then he's not. If he's not on the throne, if you're, if you're a Christian who thinks you can live with offense, he's not seated on the throne of your heart. You've got to get rid of that stuff. Can I tell you, offense is a trick of the enemy to keep you in bondage. You got to let that stuff go. God says, do it. Just do it in obedience to me because it's good for you. It's freedom for you. We cannot continue to be toxic like the world. We're here to serve and lead people to a deeper walk with the Lord or a new walk with the Lord. I personally do not like the story of Job. How many of you like the story of Job? Some people do. It's, that's great. I don't like it theologically. I can explain it, but I don't like it. I don't like the thought of in one day I could lose everything that's precious to me. I don't like the thought of that happening to you. I don't like the story of Job. Just being honest with you. I said what I said. That's the thing they say on social media today. I said what I said. Don't hate. What? Don't at me. Yeah, okay. I learned another cool thing. I'm not ever going to be cool, but hey. But the defining moment and the defining statement of Job's life is this. When he has finished testing me, I shall come forth as pure gold. When he has finished testing me, I shall come forth. And let me tell you something. He said that with full faith. Doesn't matter what happens to me. I know who my God is. That's, I think it's important that God gave me those, what do I still know? Because no matter if I got COVID or not, I still know God's my healer. Doesn't matter if I lost my job, I still know God is my provider. I know some things. And when I'm being tested, those are the things I hold on to. So you know what? Let me help you here. Doesn't matter what circumstances come next year. Who is God in your life? Do you still know he is your savior? Do you still know that when you come through whatever it is, you'll be pure gold? Because that's his, his goal. People say they want a word for the new year, a word or a word. And I've never, it doesn't, that's not really important to me. I just want to know, God, what are you doing today? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to follow? Yes, vision, yes, strategy. But when the Lord gave me that message, when I was laying in the hospital room, the, the word the, the Lord kept saying to me is we first have got to be holy. Holiness has got to come back to my church. We've got to be holy as he is holy. Because let me tell you something, church, we've been seeking the gifts, the power, all of that, and all that's good. But he said to me this very plainly, power comes from holiness. When we clean up our lives and walk in holiness, and you say, well, we can't be holy. No, God tells us there's a holiness, a positional holiness we stand in, that he made us holy. And then there's a righteousness and a holiness he wants us to walk out, which is letting go of the world, which is full surrender, which is giving him our all. And that's the goal, full surrender. God, I withhold nothing from you. You can take everything out of my heart that isn't pleasing to you, that is sin or weight or anything that besets me that is not of you. And so I'm asking you today as we're standing right here, I want you to put your hands out in front of you. And I don't want you to just say it unless you intend to be faithful and walk it out. Lord, I release to you everything that is not pleasing to you. I release to you every area of my life. I surrender it to you. I ask you to purify me. I ask you to cleanse me. God, I want to be holy as you are holy. 
I want your power, but I'm not going to seek you for power and gifts. I'm going to seek you for you until I look more like you than anything else. I'm going to get through this because I want to give you what the Lord gave me. The Lord said this to me to say to you, and then I'm going to finish. Many of you are going through some difficult things, and he said, a lot of people are going through difficult things, and they're not bitter. A lot of people are going through difficult things, and they're not offended. A lot of people are going through difficult things, and they're not worried or anxious. A lot of people have made the same mistakes you've made, maybe worse, and are thriving and prospering, not wallowing. Many people have lost too, and we're not discounting any of this. Some even more than most of us, and they're full of compassion and love. They're not angry and pointing fingers. What's the difference? How do they come out like gold? It's who they're listening to. It's who they're abiding in. Where is your faith? What are you standing on? What truth are you standing on? Something some counselor spoke that doesn't know Jesus. Something some friend at work that you think is wise. Something that your Aunt Martha told you and she doesn't even know but two scriptures. No are you standing on the truth of God's word and who you know him to be? Who he's been faithful to you? And if he hasn't, you need to start now. Because Jesus said this, if you abide in me. Abiding means to make your dwelling place. You don't just pass through like you're on a little camping trip and you're going to come back once in a while. Abiding means making your home there. I'm going to abide in his word. I'm going to abide in his presence. I'm going to abide in him in 2021. Yeah, if you haven't been, you got to change that. I'm going to abide until I come out like pure gold. Moses was a murderer, and yet God used that man as a deliverer of a nation and he was called a friend of God Abraham lied about his wife and nearly got her in trouble with having an affair with a king not on her part but he slept with her handmaiden I could go on about him but he's called the father of our faith and the Bible says this about him he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness Esther, she defied the laws and the traditions and fasted and prayed and sought God and saved her people from extinction. Perhaps you came to the kingdom for such a time as this. There's so many others. David, I love him, but I'll go to Paul, one of my favorite people. Well, we know who Paul was. <laughs> Paul murdered Christians. And let me tell you something. He did it righteously. He believed what he was doing was what God wanted him to do. It wasn't like he was just running around trying to kill Christians for the fun of it. He was a Jew of Jews. And he thought these Christians were of the devil. But God knocked him off his high horse. <laughs> and he believed and humbled himself and became the greatest servant that ever lived we think of Paul as this great writer this great teacher leader but he became the greatest servant that ever lived he stood up in the midst of a storm when God had declared this ships gonna crash he stood up in that storm and one of his life's declarations sirs I believe God I'm telling you in 2021, you stand up in the midst of the storm and you declare, sirs, devil, family.
family, whoever you are, I believe God. You can't tell me I can't start a business in 2021. I believe God. He told me to. I'm going to do it. You can't tell me I can't get a promotion in 2021. I believe God. You can't tell me fill in the blank. I believe God. I believe God. Challenges should never defeat a believer. Don't let defeat be your perspective. Challenges bring growth. Growth brings authority. And authority brings freedom and victory. And we stand in authority. I just said 2020 was not a year of sickness and it's not of defeat. It was a year of healing, thriving, growth, and calling people to deeper intercession. And we made it. And the enemy did not steal our voice. And we're going to lift our voice louder into 2021. And we're going to walk in more freedom and more victory as the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, honey, will you hand me my phone? I'm gonna, I promise you I'm ending real quick. But we got a, an email from one of our nurses. And I feel led that we need to read it. And then, Elizabeth, I'm going to ask you to pray. I put her on the spot, and I'm going to do it real quickly. This is from, a, from one of our nurses. She's precious to us. It's Shania Bristol. Many of you know her. And she does our dance. She was supposed to dance on Christmas in our Christmas Eve service. And because she works in the COVID unit, she felt it safer not to come and expose everyone. And so she's been, she's pretty much been staying away at some of our doctors and many of our nurses. But this is, Tiffany, will you read this because I don't have my glasses. I want Tiff to read it so you can hear from her. It says, I just wanted to let you guys know that I miss the physical presence of being with you on Sundays. But rest assured, I am being the hands and feet of Jesus in the hospital for my patients and my coworkers. And I appreciate the love and support you all have given to us each and every day. As crazy as it is, and as much death and pain as I have witnessed more now than in my whole nursing career, God is still faithful by his word, and I am standing on that as best I can every time I step foot into the hospital. I think I, I can speak for the healthcare worker, for all healthcare workers when I say that we are beyond tired, overworked, understaffed, and over our human compassion over our human capacity to absorb it all and stand. But I think about who our Jesus is, who stood for everyone, and I remain encouraged, steadfast, immovable, unbreakable, and running this race till the end. That's right. Paul wrote in his letters from the front lines, and this is my letter to you. My courage and my strength are not for me. My will to go on is not for my own personal gain, but so that God's undeniable strength will be known. My love for my job and the people I get a chance to meet every day is not for my own fulfillment, but because God just wanted them to see and witness his love just, like, just one more time. And when this is over, which it will be, we declare that with her. I will be grateful for all God had me do. I am grateful for your teaching, for your worship on the front lines in the sanctuary, and I stand in spirit with you. This too shall pass. As Elizabeth comes, I just want to say this. We have so many medical uh, and health care workers, also our policemen, all of those, firemen, all the people, EMTs. Gosh, we appreciate them. And you need to remember to pray for them. Hallelujah. Come pray, Elizabeth. Dear Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for this time in worship, God. We thank you that it's a new year, God, that we chose today, the first Sunday, to step in, God. As Pastor Mike was saying, Lord, that we are taking that step forward, God. Lord, that we declare your authority everywhere our feet go. Father God, that we will proclaim your victory in every circumstance, God. That 2021 is going to be the year that you move, God. That you make yourself revealed in the unknown parts, God. Lord, that we are your hands and feet going in and before you, Lord. Stretching out across the nations, God. That we as a church rise up, God, to take yes. back our city. Yes. To take back our yes. nation, God. 
We claim victory in your name, God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the move, God. Lord Jesus, we just ask for more in this time of worship, God. Lord, as we make room for you, God, Lord, that you would impart into us what it is you have for us, God. Lord, that we push our own agenda aside, that we stop giving excuses, God. Lord God, fill us with boldness. Fill us with courage, God. Lord, let us be your miracle workers, God, around in your people, God. Jesus, we proclaim victory. We thank you, God. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. The altars are open. If you want to come forward, you are more than welcome. Here is where.
But I do want to leave with you a last thought before we close with maybe the theme song for this year for us. And I, I, hear, I, I hear those words that are put to music, but man, there's something, there's something that penetrates me into the very core of me. God, that, do I continually make room for you? I mean, it shouldn't even be about making room. It should be about you wiping out the room and you can take over. I'm not just giving them a little part of a space. Okay, come into my life. I'm, I'm giving you my life. So I, I extinguish everything that I think is necessary or that I think is important, and I give it to you. I, there are motivational speakers. There are, there are life coaches, and <laughs> there are fitness companies, and there are prophets and there are preachers that have declared that 2021 is going to be a year of breakout and breakthrough and increase. May be the greatest year that you've ever seen. Probably most of you, as each year has passed and you wind down to the end of a year, you have heard declarations 
that are always declaring that the year coming is going to be better, only to find out in maybe more cases than not that it ends up being the same as it was before. I, I asked God, I said, God, why, why is it that your people have such an expectation for the beginning of a new year, a new season, but, but by the middle, maybe by the end, it ends up being more disappointment and frustration than it was what they were expecting at the beginning. I mean, how, how many of you uh, have even made mistakes, but yet you know God is not finished with you yet? Raise your hand. Come on. How many of you have even created a mess, a big mess for yourself? Or you found yourself in a, in a period of life that just, I'll just tell you, the only way, the best way, the adjective is sucky. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. But yet you know that God can turn that thing around and use it for His good and can use it for His glory. I would dare say that I am convinced and I am guaranteed that everyone in here, everyone listening online, everybody that is, is breathing oxygen right now on the face of this planet, everyone is desiring something new to break forth and to break out in their life. I certainly am. That led me last night. I feel like the Holy Spirit said, you need to read this to your church this morning. And this is Isaiah 43. It's just a short little passage. It's not the entire thing. And, and this, this really for me, this little capsule says much. And it is necessary for us here. Isaiah is probably one of the most popular prophets that we know of in the Bible. In fact, most scholars and writers have said that Isaiah actually had a, a evangelist anointing on his life. I mean, he, he was charismatic. He had words when he spoke. Then the downloads that he got from God, the dreams that he saw. I mean, he was the one that 700 years plus before Jesus ever came into this world, he was, he was laying out things detailed, verbatim, what was going to take place through the seed of a woman. A virgin is going to give, and unto us a child is born, unto us a son. I mean, he laid all that out. And when he wrote the book of Isaiah, he was not writing just to Israel. He was writing to all the nations of the earth for every generation right up to this moment right now in January of 2021 here's what he says in verse 16 of Isaiah 43 he says Yahweh and what he's doing is he's laying out he's telling Israel about who God is and how big he is and what he's done and then he's gonna make a shift that's gonna be very profound in just a few moments and a few verses down he says Yahweh is the one who makes a way in the sea a pathway in the mighty waters he destroyed chariots and horses and all their mighty warriors they fell they fell never to rise again gone forever snuffed out like a wick in other words when God does something it is done it is finished and it is complete but then he says this is what he says to you now listen he just gave a depiction and an explanation of the power and the might of Yahweh, Jehovah God. Here's what he's saying to you right now. Now listen to this. This is for us starting this year. Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even, listen, no matter how good it was or how sucky it was, stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. He said, for I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. And check this out. Even now, he, he didn't even make you wait. Even now, it sprouts and it grows and it matures. Don't you perceive it? The word perceive is a word of awareness, of recognition, of understanding. Don't you perceive it? It's not just saying like, no, it's like, whoa, the light bulb came on. I got, oh, now I see, now I know. That's, don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert of Arizona. Wild beasts, jackals, and owls will glorify me. For I supply streams of water in the desert and rivers in the wilderness to satisfy, check this out, the thirst of my people, my chosen ones, you so that you whom I have shaped and formed for myself 
And here's, here's what he's looking for in the end, that you all will proclaim my praise. That's what, that's what he's after. See, listen, church, when we have an expectation for something, understand that God, God most times does not show up like God or like you think God should or God should look or God should do. And that what he's saying here is I'm doing something brand new. But that's not really the point of that whole verse because God is always doing something new. God, I mean, his Lamentations 3 says his mercies are new every morning. I mean, God is never stagnant. He's never idle. He's not up on his throne twiddling his thumbs trying to think of something to do. He got, there's plenty he could do. There's plenty that we want him to do. He's never stagnant. He's never idle. His spirit, his Holy Spirit is always moving. It's always speaking. It's always prodding. It's always prompting you. The thing is, is do you recognize the voice? Do you recognize his prompting to even respond to it? Because I'll guarantee you in 2020, much of the church, and I'm going to take responsibility for this because I probably, I know I miss some stuff. He was talking to the church in 2020. Yes. He was showing us things that could be and should be. And we had our eyes and we had our perspective all on so much of what was around us that we missed the opportunities. The thing is this, what's crazy about this whole thing is that passage of scripture, it's not about what God will do, the brand new thing, because that's a given. The question is, will you recognize it? Will you perceive it? Are you even perceiving it right now? Or are you just caught in a rut? Think about that. We, nine days ago, we celebrated Christmas. Jesus coming in to the world, the babe. I mean, I mean, think about it. God gave his only begotten son. Came through the seed of a woman, the virgin. and He was born in Bethlehem in a you know, swaddling clothes, laying in a feeding trough of, where animals eat. Do you know, though, we know the story, but do you know that right now there are Hebrews, there are Jewish people who are praying at a wailing wall in Jerusalem, and they're praying awaiting their Messiah. Why? Because 2,000 years ago he came and they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. It, so it wasn't that God didn't do something. It was just that they didn't recognize what God was doing when he did it. So the thing about this is, he's saying, I'm doing a new thing. See, the key to the new thing is not God doing something. He's always doing something. The key to the new thing, church, is will you recognize it when he does it? And I prophetically declare over you, and I will just come on the heels, and I know we've heard probably every word that can be spoken, and, you know, by prophets and by preachers and teachers. I understand that. But I declare as, as the father of the house, uh, over this house right here without walls, that 2021, you better watch out because you have opportunities that are awaiting you. You have doors that are standing before you that are already in place. Maybe the door isn't open, but it's waiting on you to come and to kick it down. It's waiting on you. You are in a position right now to, to actually step into another level of, of, of miracle power, of perspective, of godly wisdom that you've never functioned in before. But the thing is this, is will you recognize the opportunity when God brings it to you? Understand that opportunities have a shelf life. They don't last forever. I mean, opportunities, opportunities, if you miss them, they may never come back around again, ever. That's why I love the story of, of blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10. I mean, Jesus is coming through, through Jericho, the scripture says. I mean, it just basically just says that Jesus came into Jericho, went through Jericho, and went out of Jericho. It doesn't say that he did anything there. Now, that's odd, because can you imagine the Son of Man, Son of God, walking through the city, and nobody sees the opportunity. They let opportunity pass them by. But the scripture doesn't give any indication that happened until he was walking out of Jericho. There was this crazy, passionate man sitting on the side of the road who can't see. 
But he knew, he recognized, he recognized the hustle and bustle. He recognized the sound. He recognized something. He said, I'm not letting this opportunity pass me by. And he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody, everybody turns around and says, shh, get, be, be quiet. Come on, you're making a ruckus. Jesus doesn't have time for you. Oh, wait a second. Jesus has time for everybody because he's no respecter of a person. And he says even louder. It was like, get out of my way. Some, some of the way you guys are with wearing masks or not wearing masks. Get out. I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I understand it. But he said, I'm not going to let you hold me back. I hear something, I recognize an opportunity, you're not going to be my stumbling block. No, I'll use you as a stepping stone. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus says, bring him over here. And all of a sudden, these people who were saying, shut up, were saying, hey, dude, he wants to see him. And he goes over, they take him over there. And Jesus just asks him, it doesn't say that Jesus called for the prayer team. Doesn't say that he called for the intercessors. Didn't say that he fasted for a quick five minutes before he talked to him. It doesn't say that he called for everybody. All he said was he spoke. He said, what is it you want? What is it that you're desiring? Basically, he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I just want to see. And he, Jesus just said, he, didn't, he just said, as your faith is, so be it. And immediately his eyes were open. His eyes. And the Bible says that he followed Jesus. Do you think Bartimaeus made an impact? Give me one more minute. Sort of. The, the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well in John 4. Jesus comes up on this woman, the Samaritan. Jews and Samaritans, they didn't really, you know, obviously converse very much together. But Jesus enters into conversation with this woman. And eventually, after they got a bunch of you know, talk out of the way. Jesus narrows down to the very core and he begins He begins talking her life, where she's been, what she's done, who she's lived with, the guy she's lived with, now, all these kinds of things. The bottom line is, is this woman said these words. He, she said, Sir, I perceive. In other words, I, I recognize. I mean, like, it's like, I'm having a light bulb moment. I perceive that you are the Son of God. You are a prophet. And Jesus goes on to say, boy, if you really knew. And, and the thing is, the significant change that took place in her life. She left that well. The Bible says she went back and began to tell people about this man that had told her everything about her life. And she said, this could be the anointed one. This could be the, the Messiah. And the Bible says that the townspeople began to, part of them began to run out to Jesus to where he was. He began to minister to them. They got saved. They got changed. Some of them were healed. And it created more from the town. They, they came out. Eventually, what happened is one woman's voice. We talked about voice before. One woman's voice. One woman's encounter with the Most High. She went back. She was bold. She said, I'm going to let just like Bartimaeus. Come on. you got to know this is the one. This is the one I think this could be. And the town was changed because of one woman's testimony. I speak that and declare that over Without Walls Church in the name of Jesus. That our lives will be the lives that transform that change a city, that change a neighborhood, that change a workplace, that change a job, that change your, listen, that changes your family's life. In Jesus' name, this is the year. We're not going to let opportunities pass us by. Oh no, we're going to seize opportunities because we are right now, we are in perceiving mode. We are going to say, Holy Spirit, you open up my understanding. You open up my eyes. Man, you open up my perspective right now. Let me not look. Let me not be judgmental. Let me not live in offense. Let me not live with a chip on my shoulder. No. Oh, no, God. Everything is of you. You are doing something new, and you have placed me in this position right now to where I'm going to inflict change. I will be the light of the world. And just like the Samaritan lady, we can change our city. That's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to this last song. 
Hallelujah. 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 That camera right back there. They're watching right now. Yeah, come on. We love you, seniors. We miss every one of you. We can't wait to hear back in here. Hallelujah. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring that the latter days will be greater than the former over our seniors. I know that many of them right now are taking precautions and they're taking steps that they feel are necessary. But Father, I'm declaring right now that the divine protection of your hand will be upon their lives, that wholeness would surround their marriages and their, uh, their, their interactions and their home in Jesus' name. I pray that there won't be an ounce of fear that will resonate in their lives, but God, that faith will arise and the Lord, that they will begin to stand up right now. Maybe they're even just dancing in their living room. Maybe they're just lifting their hands and just saying, Father, I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and say, 